Hello, everyone. I hope this uh, presentation gets you in the holiday spirit and gets you ready for decorating your homes. So growing up, there were always two certainties about Christmas. We always had a live Christmas tree, and my mom always made us a new Christmas outfit. So while I didn't always like the Christmas outfit, I always enjoyed venturing out as a family to find a Christmas tree. Oftentimes, we would just go out um, onto some of our timber land and find one, and then sometimes we would also go purchase one. But it's definitely a fun activity to do as a family. And if you have no knowledge of Christmas trees or their maintenance, it can develop into, into a headache. So some things to think about when choosing your Christmas tree is we obviously want that traditional Christmas tree shape. Oftentimes our Christmas trees are in the shape of like a triangle or a pyramid. Um, and so that's something that you'll want to look for when choosing your live Christmas tree. We also have ingrained in our brains um, the traditional colors of Christmas trees. So oftentimes we'll choose a green Christmas tree for live Christmas trees, we also have the option of some blue ones. So that's something that's a bit different and something you can try if you're interested in it. It's also important to look at the branch distribution. Uh, so obviously we don't want any holes in our trees where we can see straight through the tree. Uh, and we wanna make sure that's something that um, we look for as well. And then I would argue maybe one of the more important things is needle retention. So when we bring those cut Christmas trees into our homes, we're bringing it into its non-natural habitat and it can cause it to dry out. Um, and so this is something to look for when choosing a Christmas tree as well. But the needle retention can also be dependent on when the tree was cut, as well as its conditions during storage or transportation. So if it's been in storage or transportation for a long period of time, we would obviously expect our needle retention to be poor due to it potentially drying out. A good rule of thumb is pines typically have the longest needle retention. Firs are in there in the middle, pretty mediocre, and then spruces have the shortest period of time. So we'll take a look at our uh, longer needle retention trees, which are our pines. Pines are very popular with the scotch pine, probably the most popular Christmas tree in the country. Pines are known for having a pleasant scent as well as excellent needle retention and the branches are stiff enough to hold heavy ornaments. Um, it's also a favorite for traditionals. It does have, it is a dense tree with dark green needles. Typically our pines have the longer needles anywhere from one to three inches in length. Again, the characteristic of pines is it does have stiff branches with excellent needle retention. And the scotch pine is an economical choice because it is more popular. Um, it is grown on more acres. And so that way it is more available. It is less fragrant. So if you're not attracted to the Christmas tree smell, this is a good option for you. In the pine family, sorry about that, it's not advancing. We also have the white pine. The white pine is another pine commonly sold at Christmas tree farms. It is the largest pine in the US and it does have a dense, um, dense needles with soft green needles. If you're going to run into a Christmas tree in, in the middle of the night, this is definitely one that you would wanna run into. The needles are long again, ranging from three to five inches. And then they're often in clusters of five. So I was always taught white, um, it's five letters long. And then the needles are also in clusters of five. Um, so that's a good way to identify the white pines. The branches are very flexible, meaning that heavy ornaments may fall off and needle retention is not quite as strong as the Scotch pine. White pine is less aromatic, and so it's suggested that those with allergies, um, this is a good tree option. And then it also is a great economical choice for, consum for consumers looking for a large tree. 
Next, we have the fir trees. Fir trees are known for having a very pleasant scent. They have excellent needle retention that will last the entire holiday season and branches that are stiff enough to hold most ornaments. However, if you do have really heavy ornaments, um, you may decide to go with a spruce. These trees do have bright green needles with white on the underside, which makes for an attractive display. Firs are also reasonably priced and abundantly cut. The first fir tree that we're looking at today is the balsam fir. It is the preferred species for those that enjoy the Christmas tree scent. So um, if you are a shopper or enjoy candles, one year I did work at Bath and Body Works as a seasonal employee. Um, and I think every Christmas candle in the store had balsam in it, which makes perfect sense due to the tree providing the strong Christmas tree scent. It also has dark green needles that are soft. The needles are typically anywhere from half an inch to one and a quarter inch in length. Um, so they do have shorter needles, which sometimes is more favorable with a Christmas tree. It has excellent form, so it has that traditional Christmas tree form. It retains fragrance well, so if you think about it, oftentimes when we bring our Christmas trees into our home, um, we get that stronger scent, and then after a week or so, it, it's not quite as strong, uh, whereas this balsam fir does retain the fragrance well. And then it also has fair needle retention. Also in the fir family, we have the Fraser fir. This tree has blue-green needles with silvery undersides. It does have stiff branches, which will hold up well for your heavier Christmas ornaments. Again, tradition, like characteristic of the firs is it does have a pleasant scent with excellent needle retention. And then one thing about the Fraser fir that sets it apart from other trees is it does have excellent shipping characteristics. So if you live in an area where there's not a lot of fresh cut tree farms or cut yourself tree farms, um, this might be a good option for you as it does ship well. In addition to the firs, we have the Canaan fir, which combines many of the characteristics of the balsam fir with the better, better needle retention of the Fraser fir. So this is a tree that we don't often see in the US, but it is becoming more popular. It has excellent needle retention, so uh, it just combines the positives of both the balsam and the Fraser fir. It is fragrant and it has soft needles. In the fir family, we also have the Douglas fir, which has many good characteristics when used as a Christmas tree. Every year, more and more production acres are devoted to the Douglas fir due to its popularity. It has soft, dense needles that are retained for weeks, even in the warmth of our homes. So when we bring these trees into our homes, um, that warm, hum or not so humid environment can um, dry out our Christmas trees, but the Douglas fir still does well in that environment. The branches aren't quite as stiff and because it is a fast growing tree, it only requires about six to eight years for development. It is often favored in a budget friendly option. And again, with the firs, you know, the fragrance comes with it. So it does have a sweet fragrance that can often be used in holiday potpourri scents. We also have the con color or white fir. So the con color or white fir has small narrow needles that are one to one and a half inches long. It can be as blue as a blue spruce. So if you do like that blue color, um, you'll learn in a couple slides that the blue spruce does not retain its needles as well. And so if, if the blue is something that you're looking for, this might be a nice alternative to it. It has a strong citrus-like scent, which is something that is different with Christmas trees. And then it also has excellent needle retention. Our last Christmas tree in the fir family is the Korean fir. And as you can guess, it is native to Asia. It is native to the Korean peninsula. However, it does grow well in our climate and with our soil types. It has dark green needles 
that are anywhere from half inch to an inch long. And again, with the furs, they are green on top with two white stripes on the underside of the needle. One thing about the Korean fur that's really attractive is if you look at this picture of it, it is a prolific cone producer, which is not really something that you care about um, when selecting it as a Christmas tree. But if you were to grow this in your yard, it does have very pretty cones that it puts on. Next, we have our spruces. So spruces are not as popular Christmas trees, primarily due to their relatively poor needle retention. The Colorado blue spruce is one of the most popular Christmas trees in the spruce family due to its bright blue color. The branches are very stiff and can support some of the heaviest ornaments. It does have sharp needles, so it is suggested if you do have this tree that you should wear gloves and long sleeves when handling. But one thing to think about with the sharp needles is that once the needles begin to fall, the blue spruce are about the worst tree to have in your house, as when you're walking around the house, you can find um, the needles will end up in your socks or slippers, and we all know that that's not a fun experience. A spin on the sharp needles is that if you do have pets in your house, they are a good way to keep the pets away from the tree. Uh, so if you have issues with that, that might be something that you would look into. If you want to have a Colorado blue spruce as your Christmas tree in your house, you should probably wait just a few weeks before Christmas due to their poor needle retention. Uh, that way you can enjoy it for longer. We also have the white spruce, also known as the Black Hill spruce, which is not a commonly available Christmas tree as it is frequently cut from the Black Hills. In the, um, it's often cut in the national forest there. It does make for a nice tree, particularly when cut fresh, though the needle retention is poor. Black Hill spruce trees also do not have much of a fragrance and occasionally can produce a slight musky odor if the foliage is bruised. These trees do require a longer period of time to grow, so it takes anywhere from 10 to 15 years to produce a good sized Christmas tree, uh, which makes these trees often more expensive. And then lastly, in the spruce family, we have the Norway spruce. These trees have poor needle retention and they're often considered one of the most difficult trees to be kept alive. Um, if you are interested in a Norway spruce, you should purchase these just a couple weeks before Christmas. But the Norway spruce has been making it in the news lately. So uh, it is the tree of choice for the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Um, you can see here in the right picture is the tree it, where, before it was cut and then it was transported to New York and you can see it isn't quite in the same condition. Um, and because of that, it's been in the news a lot lately for being a very sad looking Christmas tree. However, I'm sure they will make it look a lot nicer before Christmas. So prior to going to the Christmas tree lot or going to cut down your tree, it is a good idea to determine where you're, where you're going to put it. So ideally you would keep it away from direct heat sources such as your fireplace or any furnace vents as this will cause the tree to die, dry out a lot faster and you'll actually end up watering it more often. Um, another thing, it's not a crucial thing, but it is a good idea just for your ease of use is to make sure that there's an electrical outlet close. Obviously we can use extension cords, however, uh, those can be unsightly. Um, and so it's always nice to have it close to an electrical outlet. It's also a good idea to measure your space to make sure that you are choosing a tree that will fit in your space. So with a Christmas tree, they have a taper ratio. So that's the ratio of the tree width to the tree height, which is anywhere from two to three. An example of that is with a 10 foot tall tree, they'll typically be eight feet wide at the bottom. So you may have the height um, 
to be able to fit the Christmas tree in there, but you also want to make sure that you have the correct width too, as it can take up a good amount of space. And then also you should measure the height of your ceiling. A lot of times we think, oh, well, I'm five feet tall and I have three feet to the ceiling or whatnot, depending on your ceiling height. Um, and so when you go to a lot, you might be on a slope or something, which can cause you to be off on your measurements. So it's always good to measure and take your tape measure along. So that way you can get accurate measurements of the tree. And then it's also important to think about how you're decorate. So if you think back to some of the trees that we have discussed, some of them don't have as strong of branches. And so we wanna make sure that if we have heavier ornaments, that we are choosing a tree that can hold up to those ornaments. Otherwise, we'll look like Charlie Brown here and our Christmas tree branches will be resting on the floor. Uh, and that's not something we want. When choosing your Christmas tree, the best advice that I can give you is to choose a tree that was recently cut. If you don't know, ask. Um, there's also the option to cut the tree yourself. So if you do have a Christmas tree local and you can do the cut yourself option, that's always a nice choice because you have cut it right then and there and you know it's fresh. The downside to cut yourself option is typically there's fewer options. So you're going to get something that grows well in your area and that's pretty much your only option. If you buy pre-cut trees, oftentimes those can be shipped in from somewhere else. And so you have a lot more options, but with those, with pre-cut trees, it's a good idea to call ahead to determine when they get their shipments. So that way you can go just a day of or the day after and get a tree that has just been shipped and you can get it in water and hopefully maintain that freshness. Some ways to check for freshness of a tree is to look for a firm tree. There's a couple different tests that you can do to determine how fresh the tree is. One test is to bounce the trunk on the ground. So just grab the tree kind of by the waist and then um, bounce it on the ground a few times. And if you notice that there's some needles falling off the tree, then that's a good sign that it's not very fresh and you may want to put that one aside. Another test is the pull test. So what you do with this is you gently pull on the end of the branch with your thumb and forefinger. And again, needles should not fall off. And that's how you can determine how fresh the tree is. Once you get the tree home, you wanna get it in water fairly quickly. So it is important to choose a quality stand that will keep the tree up straight. I remember as a child, um, one evening, my grandmother was in bed and she heard a loud thump. Um, she went out to her living room and she thought that there was someone out there uh, possibly that broke in, but it was actually just her Christmas tree. It had fallen over. Um, and so by buying a quality stand that's going to help to keep your tree up straight, you can avoid any um, heart attacks like that. And um, you can, it just helps a lot to be able to keep that up tree up straight. If you're not going to um, put your tree up right away when you get home, it is a good idea to store it in the garage or in another cool place that's unheated with the end, the cut end, obviously, in a bucket of water until you're ready to put it up in your house. Uh, when choosing a tree stand, there's a lot of different options. Um, this red and green one here is what we traditionally used when I was a kid. Some difficulties with that is you have to get the screws just right to make sure that the tree doesn't uh, go off to the side or like slide over and become on straight. There's also these spike uh, Christmas tree stands where they drill a hole in the base of the Christmas tree and then it sits on that spike there. Um, and then it looks like they've gotten pretty high tech with different Christmas tree stands. It looks like this one here has a wire around the base. And as you uh, pump this foot stand, it makes it wire. And then also those prongs come in tighter to help support the tree and keep it upright. 
Um, I don't personally have any recommendations on tree stands. I don't know what works best, uh, but with some research, you can kind of figure out what you what your preferences are and what would work best for you. So how can you make your tree last? It's best to buy a fresh tree. Now that's something you've heard me say repeatedly. You can either cut your own tree or you can do the different tests to see if it is fresh. It's also a good idea to make a fresh cut. So if it was a pre-cut tree when you get home, it is a good idea to cut off a half inch to one inch off the base of the tree. There's no need to cut the base of the tree if you've cut it within the last six hours. So say you cut it yourself, there's no need to cut it when you get home. Um, that is if you're coming straight home. If you have other errands to run, have to go get decorations or something, and it's been over six hours, you should decide to, to cut the base off when you do get home. You also wanna make sure that you're providing your tree with fresh water. So you should check your tree stand at least daily and you don't want your water to fall below the level of the trunk bottom. Um, back to your tree stand. So a lot of times when you look at some of the details on your tree stand, it will say that your tree stand will hold about a gallon of water. Um, you wanna make sure that you get enough or get a tree stand that will hold enough water for the size of your tree. And another thing to think about too is oftentimes it says a gallon of water, but that's when the tree stand is empty. That doesn't take into account the tree trunk. So we all know that a tree trunk is going to displace water and it's going to take up space. So it's not truly holding one gallon of water. Typically it's recommended that you uh, provide the tree with one quart of water for every inch of diameter of the trunk. So an example of that is if you have a tree trunk of two inches, it requires about two quarts of water per day. And then I've seen some um, things online of like how to make your tree last. And a lot of people have their own home remedies of how to make it last longer. So there are some commercially prepared mixes. Some people recommend aspirin or sugar, I read bleach too. Um, these additives aren't necessary. It research shows that just plain old water will make your tree last plenty of long. You also shouldn't drill holes in the trunk or whittle away, whittle away the trunk to make it smaller. Neither of these help to improve water uptake. It could actually damage your tree. So those are things that you should not do. If your stand becomes dry for more than six hours, the tree's pores will start to plug up and it will have a more difficult time pulling up water. If this does happen, um, if it does dry out and it's been for more than half a day, you really should recut your base again. And if we think about that, that's really difficult to do. So you have all your decorations and everything on the tree. Um, and you have to pull it out of the tree stand and cut it off. So it's really best just to make sure that you're providing the tree with enough water each day. One thing that I found a tip on how to water your tree more easily, because obviously we often put tree skirts around our tree. Sometimes we'll put presents as well. Um, so you can create your own little contraption to make it easier to water. So what you can do is you can take three to four feet of a vinyl tubing and run that down into your tree stand. And then you can wire that maybe into the back of your tree where someone can't see it. And then use a funnel to pour water to get down into the tree stand reservoir. So that should be an easier uh, way to water your tree. If you do have kids at home too, this is a good chore for them to do. I remember when I was a little kid, this was my job. I often got to water the tree. And so it was something fun for me to do each day. I had my little pitcher that I used. I knew where it was. And so I filled it up each day and, and watered the tree. Once we're done with the tree, uh, you will want to make sure that you remove water from the tree stand. Otherwise, you can create a mess. Some ways to do that is if you know that you're going to take the tree down in a couple of days, maybe you could stop watering it a day or two ahead. 
You can also use a sponge to soak up, soak up excess water or like a turkey baster to pour, pull water out of the tree stand. You'll wanna wrap the tree in a bed sheet or plastic sheet. That way you can minimize the mess in the house and then take it outside. And then it's always a good idea to recycle it. So maybe you have a local compact posting facility or I know like our local uh, Boy Scouts will pick up your Christmas tree for a minimal fee. And then that way uh, you're supporting a good organization, but they also recycle it. If you enjoy doing uh, crafts or anything, you could also use your Christmas tree for that. Um, but lots of options to do with it in the end. So the presentation is available if you go to this website. I've tried to make it a little easier on you. It's just HTTPS um, and then the go.illinois.edu and backslash Christmas trees. Uh, so if you do want access to the slides, you can find those there. Um, we'll probably also post the YouTube videos there too to make them easy, easily accessed for you. Um, if you can't find them there, you can also go to um, the Illinois Extension Horticulture YouTube page, and they should be there as well. If you'd like more information on Christmas trees, whether you want to grow them or um, find out some different different types of Christmas trees, Illinois Extension has a nice web page for that. Uh, and you can find that there. Also, the National Christmas Tree Association provides us with some nice information as well. And then if you are from Illinois, the Illinois Christmas Tree Association has a nice web page, and they also have a find a local Christmas tree. So if you are interested in a live Christmas tree and don't know where to go to get one, that is a nice resource to be able to find those. And then we're always looking for feedback. How did we do? What can we do better? Uh, also, um, what would you like to see or hear for future webinars? So you can either visit the, um, the link there or you can get your cell phone out and open up the camera on your cell phone and take a picture of the QR code and that will take you to the evaluation there. So this is a really nice resource for us because we can improve and provide you with better information. So this is a good growing webinar. We do webinars periodically and we also do weekly blogs as well as weekly podcasts. So if you're interested in those, again, you can pull out your camera and open um, the camera on your phone and take pictures of these to be able to subscribe to the blog and podcast. We also have some other webinars coming up. Um, so it is a holiday themed webinar series. If you're interested in those, you can uh, register for those. We have coming up next week, fun with evergreen foliage. So how to use foliage that maybe you have in the backyard or you can also purchase from a florist or local nursery. So we'll be making wreaths, we'll also be doing kissing balls, outdoor holiday planters and evergreen gnomes. Um, so another fun hands-on activity that you can do next week. We also have popular holiday plant care. So oftentimes during the holidays, we will buy or be gifted poinsettias, amaryllis bulbs, holiday cactus, or a Norfolk Island pine. Um, and we'll be discussing how we can take care of these plants and keep them lasting year, year long. And then we also have holiday spices. So the holidays are a wonderful time to uh, bake and do some holiday cooking. And so Ken and Chris will be discussing uh, some of the different holiday spices as well as how to grow them. And then coming up next year in January, following uh, the Christmas holiday, we'll be discussing how to create a winter bird haven. So it's always fun to watch birds in our yard this time of year 
And so Chris will be educating us how to create a habitat that birds enjoy. And then we'll also be doing some hands-on activities of creating um, bird feeders. So this is my contact information. Right now, a lot of us are working from home. So email is the best way to contact us. If you do have any questions on each of our contact pages, you will find our emails at the bottom. So if you wanna jot those down real quick, I'll go slow and you can ask us questions either about growing Christmas trees, uh, the decorations or the ornaments that we made or anything else that you might have questions about. Here's Ken's information if you have any questions for him. And then we have Chris. And last we have Andrew.